What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing my top favorite makeup in every single category. I do try a ton of makeup throughout the course of the year, so I feel like it's good to do these every once in a while and let you know what's at the very top of my list, what I'm actually using when I'm not on camera in real life. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So I guess we'll go ahead and start with complexion products first. If you just saw my recent declutter video, you probably are gonna be able to guess a few of these because I talked about them and gave little mini reviews during the declutter, but um, first, Let's start with primer. So uh, my number one primer, which I've already talked about this so many times on my channel over the years, is the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. This is my number one primer if I want my skin to look really smooth and really airbrushed, really poreless. This is the best pore smoothing primer I have ever tried. I've tried so many different ones and there are some that I really like, but I just keep going back to this one because it's so effective. It looks really good on camera and even in real life, if I'm wearing this, people will actually ask me what skincare are you using? Your skin looks so good. And I'll just tell them it's this. Even if you're not wearing foundation, if you put this on, it just kind of softens everything on your face. It softens redness, any kind of like broken capillaries or pores, like the look of your pores. It just kind of makes everything look really smooth. So even if you don't put foundation on, it still makes your skin look better. It's amazing. But sometimes I do want a little bit of glow under my foundation, especially if my skin is looking dull and dry in the winter time. I use this a lot. Lot. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So I use this under foundation normally, but you can also mix it in with the foundation. It kind of will thin the texture out a little bit and it just adds the most beautiful, really natural glow. So this is my primer that I use in daily life. I would say I use the Studio Secrets one more when I'm gonna be on camera because I want my skin to look smooth or for going somewhere like a baby shower or you know to somebody's house and I really want my skin to look extra perfect. I'll wear this one, but just in everyday life, I usually reach for this one, especially if my skin is looking extra dull and dry. And I recently just got the new Sun Touchable um, sunscreen from e.l.f. And this kind of gives the same effect as the Halo Glow. It gives your skin this really beautiful radiance and it has SPF 30. So I think heading into the warm weather now, I'm probably gonna replace my Halo Glow and use this one more often. Obviously you should wear sunscreen year round, but here in the Northeast, in the winter time especially, we're just not going outside very much. It's freezing cold. So I tend to not wear sunscreen as much. I always make sure to wear sunscreen if I'm going to be leaving the house. And I think this is a really good one because it kind of acts like a glowy primer and a sunscreen in one. Next, when it comes to foundations, I would say my number one foundation at the moment that I wear every single day is the L'Oreal True Match. This is the new reformulated one. There's been some debate on whether it's been reformulated from the old version or whether it wasn't. I initially thought it was not reformulated. That's what I saw somewhere like that L'Oreal had published it, that it was just new packaging. It didn't used to have a pump. It was just an open bottle that you had to pour out. So I'm glad that they added the pump, but then I went on L'Oreal's website and it does say that there have been some changes to the formula, but either way, this is the most gorgeous, most natural looking foundation I have just about ever tried. High end drugstore. It doesn't matter. It's a really thin serum like texture and it just kind of becomes one with your skin. It never looks like you're wearing foundation, but yet it has decent coverage. I would say it's like somewhere between light and medium. It just feels so silky on your skin and it doesn't grab to any dry areas and it doesn't sink into pores or fine lines. I just love that it's so thin and weightless and it doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. So I tend to reach for this one on just about an everyday basis. If I do want more coverage, for example, if I'm going on camera, I've been reaching for the Revlon Illuminance Foundation. This one is also really skin-like and really natural looking, but it's a little bit more coverage than the L'Oreal. So this just tends to look a little bit better on camera, but it also looks really good in real life too. Maybe not quite as natural as this one. If you get really close up, I think you can still tell that you're wearing foundation with the Revlon. With the L'Oreal, it's like, it doesn't even look like you have anything on. And I would say I kind of trade between the Revlon one and the Makeup Forever HD skin, which I'm actually wearing today. This is also a very thin, very weightless formula. It's really beautiful. It's probably my favorite high-end foundation of the moment. I've tried the new Makeup by Mario one and the House Labs one, and those got so much more attention and hype than this one did. But this is actually the one that I like the best on my skin. It just looks the most flawless, the most natural, and 
And while I do go on camera multiple times a week, when I look for a foundation, I mainly look for something that's gonna look good in person too, because obviously I'm gonna be seeing people in my daily life and this really looks good in person. Again, it's kind of like the L'Oreal in the way that it doesn't really look like you're wearing foundation even up close. It just really sinks in and becomes one with your skin rather than sitting on top. And I would say coverage wise, it's pretty similar to the Revlon. They're both medium coverage. You could build it up maybe a little bit more than that. And as far as full coverage foundations go, I tend to stay away from them for the most part. I can only speak to my experience having dry skin with some fine lines and texture that for me, it's hard to get full coverage to look natural. And I think that's normally what I'm going for is like that very natural look where it doesn't look like I have foundation on, even though I do. And if I do want or need a little bit more coverage, I'll usually use something like the It Cosmetics CC Cream because this has that coverage. I wouldn't call this full coverage. I know It Cosmetics says that it is, but it's probably more like a medium to full. But I like this because it's a very forgiving fuller coverage foundation in that it's very hydrating. It kind of goes on like a tinted moisturizer, but with way more coverage. So for me, this looks incredibly natural on my skin. And again, that's sort of what I'm going for. So if I do want extra coverage, I'll usually pull out this one. Next, when it comes to concealer, there are a ton of different ones that I like, but there are really only two that I use on an everyday basis these days. The first one is the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awaken. And this one I'm wearing in the video today, and I wear this one the most often. I would say it's somewhere between light to medium coverage. It's not gonna hide really dark circles, but it is very brightening underneath your eyes, and, and it just sort of wakes up my eye area. It does have caffeine in it, and it kind of claims to do that. I don't know how much of that is really true. I know caffeine can obviously wake you up like if you drink coffee or something. I don't know how it really works in the skin. I know companies like to say that it wakes you up, but it really does. At least this concealer, I feel like when I use it, my eye area just kind of brightens up a little bit more than other concealers that I have. And I just feel like it looks more awake. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is a really nice long lasting concealer. Again, it's very natural and skin-like. You can't see it on your skin because it's so thin and weightless that it just kind of disappears. And it also doesn't settle into the fine lines under my eyes too. So I use this one almost every single day, but on the days when I don't, maybe don't get a lot of sleep and I have dark circles, I'll use the Catrice True Skin Concealer. So this is my alternative to Shape Tape because everybody hyped up Shape Tape for the longest time. People love it. For me, I don't like how it makes my under eyes look. It just is a little bit heavy. It looks a little bit drying, but the Catrice one, I feel like it gives you just as much coverage as Shape Tape, but it's a little bit of a thinner formula and it's a little bit more hydrating. And under my eyes, it really does look flawless all day. So I've been using this ever since it came out. I wanna say that was maybe like two years ago now. For a while, I was using it even when I really didn't have anything to cover, but I just liked the way it looked under my eyes until I discovered the Revlon one. And I just like, again, that sort of awakened look that the Revlon gives me. So I traded using the Catrice every day for the Revlon but I do still pull this out every once in a while if I need to cover a little bit more. When it comes to setting powders, I don't use one on an everyday basis because I have dry skin. I really don't feel like I need to set my foundations. They tend to set themselves down because my skin just sort of sucks them in. And putting powder on top of dry skin is really the last thing that I normally want to do. But occasionally I'll use a foundation that's maybe more dewy or it has that sticky feel that I don't like or I can't put powder products on top of it because it's sticky. So that's when I'll usually reach for a powder and the one that I reach for the most often is the Moira Set and Correct powder. So this has a couple of different colors in it and it's supposed to be like a color correcting powder, but I just find it to be pretty translucent. I don't notice that the colors really do anything as far as, you know, correcting redness or sallowness or dark spots or anything. So I don't use it for that. It really goes on pretty transparent, but what I love about this the most is that it looks like absolutely nothing. It's not powdery. It never like cake to your dry skin, it's completely invisible. And most powders that I've tried in the past at least showed up a little bit or gave my skin that kind of powdery look. This doesn't do that. It takes down the shine, it blurs your pores, and it'll get rid of the tackiness of a foundation 
but it looks like absolutely nothing. So if you're like me and you have a hard time finding powders that don't look dry on your skin, definitely give this one a try. I think you will love it. All right, let's move on to bronzer. And I have a cream bronzer and then two powder ones. And these are the three that I think I use the most often. So the cream bronzer is the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. I think that's what it's called, yeah. This is in the shade Light and it is very pigmented. So it had a little bit of a learning curve at first. I kind of swirled my brush in there and I took way too much and it got really muddy. So don't do that. If you try this bronzer very, very lightly, just tap a little bit on your brush. I sometimes even like wipe my brush off a little bit on my hand and then I use it. But I love this slightly cooler tone color for my skin tone. And this has just a really beautiful formula. It's really um, powdery in the dry down. It's not like a sticky cream that stays tacky on your face. It just sets right down immediately and it's very long lasting on your skin as well. And I would say this has been my most used bronzer since the fall because again, in the colder weather, my skin gets drier and I try to use less powder if I can. So I've really been using this one almost every single day since the fall time. But in the summer, my skin goes from dry to to more of like a normal to dry so I can get away with a lot more in the summer and that's usually when I'll wear a powder more often so my favorite powder bronzer of the moment is this L'Oreal infallible fresh wear bronzer I have it in the shade fair and again it's just like the most perfect cool tone bronzer it's really beautiful it warms up my skin without being overly orangey or yellow the powder is just so silky and finely milled I feel like it never looks muddy and it just blends on your skin so seamlessly and then if I want a little bit more glow, I'll use the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzer. This one has a little bit of luminosity to it, but it's not glittery or sparkly. It just adds a little like of that glow to your skin. And this is also a baked bronzer and those are always so forgiving if you have drier skin because the baked powder starts out as a cream and then it's baked. So it has all of those really good nourishing ingredients in it. And they just tend to be a little bit more silky than a pressed powder. So I would definitely say the these three bronzers are my top picks. When it comes to like a contour, I know there's a lot of contour wands that have come out lately. The Tarte one, Milani has one. Um, obviously there's the Charlotte Tilbury one that everybody talks about. And I have all of those, I like them. There's also the new Flower Beauty one. But if I contour, I always tend to reach for my NYX contour stick. And the reason being, first of all, I think it's a little bit easier because this is just a cream stick. So you just kind of swipe it on, it's not that liquid where you have to kind of put the dots and then blend like this is just so easy and also this color which is fair is a lot cooler toned than any of the other contour ones that I have in my collection those are all like a little bit warm they're almost like a liquid bronzer this one really gives that sort of grayish taupey brown that looks more like a shadow on your face versus warming it up like a bronzer so it's really the perfect color and on the other side you have a beautiful highlight as well it dries right down to powder finish and it doesn't disturb your foundation underneath. So this is my number one contour product hands down. It's the one that I reach for more than any of the others. And when it comes to blush, this was a really hard category because I couldn't really narrow down a blush that I like. I tend to reach for different ones for different reasons. I have some favorites that are more cool toned. I have some favorites that are more warm toned. Sometimes I use cream blush. So I tried to kind of split it up into categories. As far as like a cool tone pink blush, I think like if I'm wearing, you know, a gray or taupe on my eyes and I really want my cheeks to be like a light cool pink, the Persona Bubble Blush is my number one. I do have the Dior Rosy Glow Blush. I just like the formula of this one a little bit better. The Dior one can be hard to pick up. It gets hard pan sometimes and I have to put so many layers on. This is pretty much the same exact color, but I just think it's way easier to use and blend and I don't have to keep going back into the compact. It's also way less expensive than the Dior one too. So this is my number one cool tone blush. As far as like warmer blushes go, I mean, I just use a bunch of different ones. It's hard to pinpoint exactly, but I have to say I've been loving 
loving the Revlon powder blushes lately, and I tend to reach for these more than other powder blushes in my collection. They just remind me so much of the NARS blushes. They have such a good formula. They come in beautiful colors, and I love these huge pans because you can really get a blush brush into it easily, and they, they just feel incredibly high-end. They're so silky. They blend out on your cheeks effortlessly. They're not so pigmented that you feel like you have to go sparingly with them, and they're not so sheer that you have to keep building them up. They just have the perfect level of pigmentation, and I feel like not a lot of people talk about these, but they're so, so good. And then I would say another favorite powder blush formula are these Flower Beauty Flower Pots blushes. These have been staples in my collection for so long, and I just reach for them over a lot of other blushes because, again, they just have that really, like, silky smooth feel. And I think the colors are gorgeous. Like, if I want a peachy blush, Peach Primrose is, like, one of my favorite colors. And then Wild Rose is a really nice cool tone pink as well. It's a little bit darker than the Persona or the Dior one, but it's similar in tone. It just gives a little bit more color. And then um, Sweet Pea is also a really good one. It's kind of like a dusty pink. And when I want a warm kind of terracotta-like color, Spice Petal is beautiful. So they just come in so many gorgeous colors, and I think the formula is honestly top-notch. They really do feel like a high-end blush. So when I go into my powder blush drawer, I'm either grabbing these or the Revlon ones most days. Then when it comes to cream blushes, I noticed that there are certain ones that I just kind of keep in my bathroom on the counter all the time. First up are these NYX Wonder Sticks. They're the same formula as the contour wand, so they have that same powdery dry down. They're really creamy and smooth, but they just blend out like a dream. They're gorgeous, and you also get two different colors with each one, so you can just use one shade or mix and match them, whatever you want to do. Most days when I'm doing my makeup, I'm pretty lazy. I like to just grab the easiest thing I can, and I feel like these are just so super quick. Also, I love the ColourPop Super Shock blushes, and these are another one that I just reach for constantly. Today I'm wearing the shade Brute Flute, which is one of my favorites. This is a pearlized finish one, so it has a little tiny bit of glow to the formula, but I wouldn't say it's sparkly or glittery, and it's just this beautiful rosy copper shade, and it looks a little bit darker in the pan than it does when you actually put it on. But I love this formula because just like the NYX ones, it's not sticky and it dries right to a Powder as soon as you go to apply it to your cheeks. It's not like that type that's gonna lift up your foundation underneath because it's greasy. And they just come in so many gorgeous colors and they're really affordable. You have the pearlized ones and then you have some that are more on the matte side. So I use both just depending on the day. If I want a little bit of sheen, I can use the pearlized one and then not use a highlighter. And then I would say one more cream blush that I tend to reach for pretty often are the Moira Love Heat cream blushes. These are a little bit Bit more dewy than the ColourPop ones, but I still really love these a lot, especially again, like this time of year, I don't mind if my blush doesn't dry down all the way, just as long as it's not overly sticky or I feel like my hair is getting stuck in it. These aren't like that at all. They remind me so much of the Tower 28 blushes. They have the same kind of packaging and the formula feels almost identical. So they give your cheeks kind of that plump dewy look and they come in the most gorgeous colors ever. So I definitely use those quite a bit as well. So I definitely use those quite a bit. When it comes to highlighter, that's not something that I wear that often. Usually these days, if I want like a glowy cheek, I'll usually just reach for like a glowy blush, like the ColourPop ones or even the Charlotte Tilbury wands. So I'm not usually wearing a separate highlighter, but if I do, there are two that I really love. One's a cream and one's a powder. So the cream is the Flower Beauty Day Glow Highlighter. And the reason that I like this is because it's not glittery or sparkly. It just gives your skin a really natural looking, almost like a pearlized sort of a sheen. So even if you're standing up close to somebody, it just looks like your skin is naturally glowy or dewy. You wouldn't like look at their cheek and say they're wearing highlighter. You really can't tell. And it really does just give your skin the most natural glow. So this is probably the one I reach for the most, but also I have to mention this one because it's been one of my favorite highlighters for so many years, and that's Mary Luminizer from The Balm. I think as far as powder highlights go, this one is just so smooth and so refined. It doesn't look sparkly. It's one of the most natural looking powder highlighters, but yet it still has that pop. It still gives your cheeks a really beautiful sheen. It can also be used on your eyes. So I've used this before as an 
inner corner highlight. It's perfect for that, or you can just use it as an eyeshadow. I tend to use it as a highlighter more often than not, but sometimes while I have it out and I'm using it, I'll just be like, all right, let me just pop a little bit in the inner corner and just, you know, use it all over the face. But it is so beautiful and like I said, just so smooth. These days, I'm not really looking for a highlighter that has glitter or like a lot of sparkle in it. So this is perfect. So moving on, when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I have two that I wanna share with you that I really just use every single day and they're both neutral palettes. So you're probably gonna think that they're boring, but one is warm toned, one is cool toned. And I basically just go back and forth between these two, depending on like what I'm wearing or the look that I wanna get. I tend to wear color if I'm gonna be on camera, but when I'm not, I rarely ever wear any bright or bold color. Most of my colorful eyeshadow palettes are from brands like ColourPop and they're a little bit more on the affordable side. I don't like to spend a lot of money on like a high-end palette that's colorful because I know I'm not really gonna wear it very often. So most of my very colorful palettes are ColourPop or from drugstore brands. So um, the two that I wanted to share first is um, Stone Cold Fox from ColourPop. This one is my cool toned option. And anytime I'm wearing cool toned clothing like blue, gray, light pink, or just any outfit that I want more of like either a gray look or a rosy tone look, I reach for this palette because it has all of that. And rather than reach for a smaller gray palette or something that has rosy tones in it, I just grab this one because it's just easier. Again, I'm very lazy when it comes to my makeup and this just has everything that I could want. I'm just like, okay, I need cool tones. Let me just grab this palette and we're good to go. I love the formula. I have no complaints when it comes to ColourPop. I think this has pretty much every cool tone shade that I would ever need just to create very neutral eye looks. So I'm not saying that I don't use other palettes once in a while if I want a cool tone look. I'll grab That's Taupe from ColourPop or Going Coconuts or even um, like the Of Quartz palette. I really like all of those as well. But this is the one that I normally grab just because I have a little bit more to pick from. And then when it comes to warm tone looks, I've only been wearing this one palette now for, I would say since December when I got it. And that is the Doll Squad 2.0 from Doll 10, which I've talked about many times on my channel. I'm wearing it again in the video today, but I just can't get over how beautiful this palette is and the formula. I hope that they just keep making Doll Squad palettes over and over, like all different ones, because I would buy every single one. The last one they had, the original, was a little bit more on the cool tone side. It had some purples in it and dustier kind of taupey shades, but this one is all warm tones and when I tell you the formula on this is one of the best eyeshadow formulas I have in my collection. It's so true. And I have eyeshadows from, you know, Natasha Denona. I have Pat McGrath. I have Sydney Grace. I would say the Doll 10 formula feels the most similar to Sydney Grace from me. The mattes are so pigmented, yet they're very smooth and they blend effortlessly. The shimmer shades, there are only three in this palette, but they are incredibly metallic and they just really pop on your eyes and they're just really soft and easy to pick up. They're not like those toppers that are in a lot of other palettes these days. And I also love the range of different colors in here. They give you some lighter options, a lot of mid-tone options, and then also some deeper ones. So it's not like some palettes I feel like really lack mid-tones. They have some light shades and then some really dark ones. I love my mid-tones just because I like to build up the crease area and I like that they give you a lot of options in this palette to do that. So anyway, these are my two absolute favorites when it comes to like cream shadows or things like just one and done. My new favorite are these KVD Dazzle Sticks. I talked about these, I think in last Sunday's video actually, and I still just can't get over how gorgeous they are. They have this water-based formula and they almost have a cooling effect when you put them on your eyes, but they are just like a one swipe, super pigmented type of shadow. And I much prefer this over a liquid shadow that's gonna be goopy and you kind of have to play with it a little bit. With this one, you just kind of slick it on and you're done. And it just sets down and it lasts the entire day. And these are incredibly impactful. They have a little like bit of glitter in them. They have a little bit of shimmer and they just really pack a punch. Sometimes I'll just use these on their own, just all over my lid. Sometimes I'll use like some powder shadows in my crease area and the outer corner, and then I'll just pop one of these on the lid as like a finishing touch. But either way, these are just gorgeous and nobody's talking about them for some reason. I also love my ColourPop Super Shock shadows for one and done looks. 
I use these so often if I don't even want to mess with eyeshadow again on just those really lazy days and I just want to grab one of these, slick it on with my finger, put on some mascara and I'm done. These are amazing for that and they come in so many different finishes. They have matte ones if you don't want sparkle that day. They have the ultra glitters which give a little bit more impact. Then they have metallic ones that are somewhere in the middle. So there's just really so much to pick from and again they're just really affordable. I tend to collect them and I just have so many of them. They're so much fun. So those are my favorite cream shadows of the moment. Then when it comes to other eye products I would say liners. I have two favorites. My favorite liquid liner is the Moira Micro Tip one and I love this because it's so small. It's amazing if you have hooded eyes and you just want to draw like this really thin line and you don't want to take up too much of your lid space. And also I love this because it doesn't skip. It's just really smooth. Like in one stroke, you can do a nice wing. So I really love this one. I kind of wish it came in more colors. And then for pencil eyeliners, the ones that I've been reaching for the most often are these ones from Persona. They're so creamy. When I first tried these, I kind of just stopped using all of my other pencil liners because these are just effortless. You don't even have to really put any pressure on them and they're just like this beautiful silky formula and it smudges out really nicely. If you want to smudge it, it works great on your waterline. So even though I do have a lot of really nice pencils, I have the Urban Decay ones. I really like the ones from Koki for a more affordable alternative, but I just keep going back to these for some reason because I just love the way that they apply. Also when it comes to eyeshadow primer, there are really just two that I've been using again for months now and I really haven't tried anything else. The first one is the Sigma eyeshadow base and this is in a stick which I really love. A lot of primers come in like a tube like this. You have to squeeze it out and put it on. This is just so easy. You just kind of draw it on, pat it in and you're done. This is the shade Ignite. They do come in other colors. They even have shimmery ones but this one is just really perfect for my skin tone and it has some coverage to it. So I have some discoloration on my eyelids and I really like to make a super smooth canvas to put eyeshadow on. And this one covers all of that up. It kind of almost matches my skin tone. So it just gives that perfect blank canvas and just the tiniest amount of grip. It's not one of those primers that you can't blend on top of because it's too grippy. This one still allows you to blend out your matte shadows without making them like grab to one area. So when I'm doing my eyeshadow, I always put this one down first all over. Then I'll go ahead and apply all of my crease products and all my mattes. And then before I put down a shimmer, I always put this on my lid. And this is the NYX Glitter Primer. Even if I'm not using a glittery eyeshadow, this will make any other shimmery shadow look so much more impactful. It just really makes things pop and come to life. You can apply a regular shimmer shade and it could look totally fine, but then when you go to put it on top of this, it just amplifies it so much more. And also I find that it helps with fallout because it's so grippy, the shadow just clings to it and nothing is falling under your eyes and it helps it to last all day as well. So I use this as like the final step just before I put a shimmer shade on my eye and after the first day I tried it, I never looked back. I use this for every single eye look now, even if I don't necessarily need it for glitter fallout because I just like how it makes my shimmer shades look. Also, when it comes to brows, I found my dream combo that I've been using now for probably the last two months or or so and in that time I haven't reached for any of my other brow products. So first I'll use this one. This is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax and I love this because it has such amazing hold. Before this I was using the Anastasia Brow Freeze because my brows grow kind of sideways and down and they need a ton of hold just to get them to stand up straight. But I didn't like how it came in the little pot and I had to have a separate spoolie brush and then every time I used it, I had to clean the spoolie brush off or else it would get like all gunky. So then I found this and this has just as much hold as the brow freeze, but the spoolie is, you know, it's attached. It just comes in the little tube. So it's super easy. So I use this and then um, underneath the cap, there's a little brush and a comb. So you can just kind of take that and put your brows exactly where you want them. And then I usually just let that kind of set down and dry and I go work on a different area of my face. This is usually the first thing I do when I go to put makeup on is I put the brow gel on, I leave it, and then I start doing foundation or my eyeshadow or something else 
while I wait for this to dry. Then when it's completely dry and my brows are in place, I can see exactly where the gaps are. What I used to do is I would fill in my brows with a pencil, then I would put the gel in, but then when I'm moving my brows, then I would have to go back in with the pencil and fill in the sparse areas that I created, you know, when I use the gel. So this way I just get my brows exactly where I want them and then I take the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. So this is actually one of those little pens versus a pencil. And, and I take this, this is in the shade Ash Brown, and I just fill in all of the little gaps that I see. And it makes the most natural hair-like strokes. It really looks like natural brows. As soon as you put it down, it just kind of dries and stays there. So it just looks really natural. And I've been loving these two products. I really, like I said, I haven't gone back to anything else. Then when it comes to mascara, I also also have two that I really have been using nonstop. The first one is the L'Oreal Telescopic, the original one. So I tried the Telescopic Lift. I do like that one. I think it gives me really big lashes, but the brush is a little bit awkward. I don't love using it. I do like the results at the end, but then one of you guys actually told me to try the old Telescopic and oh my gosh, I love this so much more. It has a really skinny little brush that just gets right up to the roots of your lashes. It doesn't make a mess everywhere. And it's great for your bottom lashes too because it's so thin. And this gives my lashes so much length, just like I'm wearing falsies. It doesn't add as much volume. I would say that's the one negative to this. It really is more of a lengthening formula, but I do naturally have quite a bit of volume in my lashes already. So usually I'm looking for more of a lengthening formula and then I'll always reach for this one. It also doesn't smudge under your eyes. It lasts all day. I also really love the Milani tubing mascara that came out recently. And this one has it all. It gives length, it gives volume. It's super easy to remove at the end of the night. I've gotten a couple of people saying that they can't remove it. Don't remove it with cleanser. It won't work. You have to use just warm water and just massage the warm water into your eyelashes and that will make it come off. You can even put an oil cleanser on top of a tubing formula and it won't make it come off. So I think that's the beauty of this is that you can just use the water to take it off so easily and it just stays put all day. And I know that if I use this, I'm never gonna have any smudges under my eyes. So nine times out of 10, when I open my mascara drawer, I'm reaching for one of these two. And then finally we have lip products. So for me, I don't normally reach for lip products that are super pigmented, like a full pigment lipstick or a liquid lipstick. On occasion I will, more often than not, my favorite lip products that I'm reaching for all the time are ones that are more sheer, like tinted balms or a lighter coverage lipstick. So at the moment, if I want something more shiny or more glossy, I love the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. I know that there are other similar products out there. Flower Beauty has some now. I just, I like the Tarte ones a little bit better than the Flower Beauty. Those are really nice. These just add a little bit more shine. If I really want a glossy lip, these are amazing, particularly the shade Honeysuckle. It's like the most beautiful sheer black cherry color. I love this one. I wear it so much. Very similar to these are the Revlon Glass Shine lipsticks. I know these are getting harder and harder to find because they've been discontinued. They do still have them on Amazon, so I'll link to that down below. But these are, like if you're looking for a dupe or something super similar to those Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, they have that same melty, glossy kind of a texture and they just feel so good and so hydrating on your lips. Another option that I just started using very recently are the Wet n Wild Rose Comforting Lip Color. Again, these are very close to the Revlon ones. I think I like the Revlon slightly more, but the Milani ones are almost identical and definitely easier to find these days than the Revlon ones. So I think these are also amazing. Another product I've been reaching for a lot lately are the NYX Fat Oils. I definitely wanna go and get more of these because they're just so good. I wanna get some to keep in my purse because they're a really good formula that you can just apply like without a mirror. They're sheer, but they do offer a little bit of color and I know some people won't love this about them, but they're very thick. They have like a cushiony feel and on my dry lips, they feel so amazing. It's not the kind of like thinner lip oil that you put on and like an hour later, it kind of sinks in and disappears. These really hold on for a while. Even after the color and the shine is gone, I still feel hydration from these. So these are another big favorite of mine right now. And on days when I just want a little bit of color, but I don't want shine, these NARS Soft Matte Lip Balms 
are so good as well. I don't hear a lot of people talking about these for some reason, but they're basically a tinted balm, but without the shine. They still have that hydration of a balm, but they kind of give that blotted lip effect. So if you were to like, let's say put on a tinted lip balm and then blot it with a tissue and then just color was left behind, but no shine, that's basically what these look like. They just look like your lips, but a little bit better. And they have like this really soft, almost airbrushed quality to them. They're so beautiful. And I know I talked about these recently, but a more affordable option is the Sephora Sheer Matte Lip Balms. So I think these are their dupe for the NARS. They really are incredibly similar. I would actually call them a dupe as well. They have the same kind of feel. A lot of the colors that they come in are almost identical. So if you're looking for something like the NARS, but you want something a little less expensive, these these are I think like around 10 bucks so they're a really good find and then just quickly when it comes to lip liners I have a couple that I've been using a lot the first one is from Thrive Cosmetics and this is in the shade khaki yes the khaki that's here on YouTube um, she has her own color and it is the perfect brown when I first saw this I was like this is too brown I'm never gonna wear it but I'm actually wearing it in the video today and what I usually do is wear it as a lipstick I do sometimes use it as a liner but this is such a creamy formula and usually I'll put on like a lip balm first and then I'll just go ahead and fill in my lips with this color. Usually if I'm wearing warmer tones on my eyes and my cheeks and I just want a really neutral, really basic lip that doesn't add a lot of color but it's a little bit on the warmer side, this is what I always go for. I just love this and I will definitely repurchase this color. I've been looking for a drugstore dupe for it, but I haven't found anything that's quite exactly the same yet. So I'll keep my eyes out. I've also really been enjoying these NYX Line Loud lip liners. These are also just so creamy, so effortless. You barely have to put any pressure on them and you could totally use these as a lipstick because of the creaminess and they don't drag when you're applying them. So I think these are beautiful. I only have two colors, but I definitely want to get a few more. And then one more lip liner that really surprised me, but I love these are these ones from Hard Candy. And I talked about these in my Hard Candy video that I did a few weeks back. These are called Instapout Lip Liner and Crayon. So these are a regular twist up lip liner, but they also come with a little brush on the other side. So you can line your lips and then take the brush and just kind of feather it out. Or if you want to like blend them on your lips, I like the addition of the brush and I actually do use it more than I thought I would. Sometimes when I apply lip liner, if it looks a little bit too harsh, I'll kind of take my pinky finger and try to blend it. But sometimes then it blends it outside my lip line and it's a little bit harder to control. But this flat brush that they give you really helps with that. And I really, like I said, I do use it quite often to just kind of feather the lip liner out or if I draw the lip liner all over, then I'll use it to smooth it out and kind of create like a lipstick. And these also have a very creamy, very comfortable formula, especially if you have drier lips. So anyway, I think that's everything that I have that I wanted to talk about. Those are all of my top, top favorites. I'm sure that as I try new products, things will inevitably change, but there are some things here that I've been using for years and I'm still using them and they're still top favorites. So I think there's a good mix here of older products and some newer ones. So if you'd like to see this video more often than just once a year, if you'd like to see it in six months or even quarterly, I'd love to hear from you down below. Let me know Know what you think and also if you have some extra time and you want to hang around on my channel for a while I would love that just um, head over here I'll put a playlist you could check out some new makeup videos that I posted recently thank you guys so much for watching and taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me I really appreciate it so much if you're new to my channel I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button and I'll see you all in my next one take care guys bye